Good morning, YouTube. Uh, Rick here with the Euro Boutique. Um, I got a CR here behind me and I wanted to uh, show you guys how to run a amplifier and speaker cables through the cart. Um, you know, up to this point, you know, the S2000, you know, I've just put a simple uh, Pioneer radio in there, you know, suffice, sounds pretty good. But, you know, because we are a car stereo shop, you know, we want some good tunes. I decided we're going to upgrade the, the CR with some better speakers, better amplifiers, and some other toys. So uh, I'll show you guys how to do it quickly and easily, and hopefully this video will help you guys out. All right. All right, so we're at the front of the car. Um, we're looking at the battery and the engine bay. Um, as with any amplifier installation, if you're going to install a dedicated amplifier to run your car, the first thing you're going to need to do is run the power cable directly from the battery, which in this case is under the hood on the driver's passenger side, all the way to the trunk where we're going to put the amplifier. Um, to do this, I can see I strung the cable kind of just mocked up right here. So you can see I have the cable flex loomed. This little terminal right here is gonna connect directly to the battery. So later when it's all finished, we're gonna connect it right there. All right, but for now, we're just gonna leave it sitting here. Um, the, the fuse is run within 12 inches of the battery. The fuse is not meant to protect the amplifier, uh, contrary to what most people think. The fuse is meant to protect the car. So we're gonna run the cable from the battery to the fuse. And then from the fuse, this wire is gonna feed all the way down the side of the engine bay like that and then it's gonna work its way around to the other side, which you can see all the wiring here. We haven't ran it yet. We're gonna run it through a factory grommet, which is gonna be down here at the bottom. And I'm gonna show you in detail later, but it's gonna be buried down here. We're gonna run it through that factory grommet into the driver compartment on the other side. Okay, remember the power cable I showed you earlier? So now we've zip tied everything down, it's all secure. The line is this particular line right here. You see that it follows along here from the battery. So from the battery, we zip tied it along the firewall, make sure it's nice and tight, doesn't touch anything hot. We brought it over, and then we brought it into the uh, firewall and into the engine compartment using a factory grommet. Uh, I'll try to zoom in on it and show you which one it is, but uh, it's going from this wire right here, going down in and into the grommet there, the factory grommet. Can you guys see that? Okay, I know it's hard to see, so i show you this one. This is the, uh, the, the, the red wire. We have it protected in flex loom. And you see that is a point where we enter the grommet. Um, I know it's hard to see, so I highlighted it with this little metal rod. You see this metal rod that I have out here? So we follow this metal rod down. You see where it's clamped down there? That's where it's running through the firewall right there. Uh, we try not to drill holes, so we use a factory grommet whenever possible. And in this case, we ran the eight gauge cable right next to the factory wiring, being very careful not to damage the factory wiring. So you can see it right down there where it's clamped on, that's where it's being held. And then now we're gonna go on the inside of the driver's foot well. Right, here we are in the driver's foot well. You can see where the red wire pops through. Nicely uh, inserted through the factory grommet. It passes in from the engine bay in here. And then from there, we just feed the wire down we try to follow it so you can see where it goes. We fed it under the carpeting. And then from there, you can see it's all here. We follow the wiring all the way down. So the wiring is gonna go along the door sill and up the back. And then uh, we fed it through the, uh, the back of the car. Okay, uh, previously uh, we installed a Pioneer radio hooked up to the stock speakers in this car and it was adequate. You know, it gave us car play. It gave us a lot of the uh, basic features we needed, but now, you know, we want better sound. So we're going to pull the radio out to plug in and run new speaker cables for the new amplifier. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, take a trim removal tool like this. Just be careful, you know, slowly work your way up on the top and we're going to pull this uh, trim ring out. Work your way, just two clips. All right. So pull it out like that. When it's out, you just kind of wiggle the bottom a little and the bottom will come up. So, can carefully pull this out. Uh, plug it right here. There's a little green plug. Push on the bottom. There's a little tab. Push on it and release it. And then carefully take it out. And that'll expose the radio bolts. From here, we're going to take uh, four screws out.
Um, so you see a lot of wiring back here. We previously had this thing wired just to the stock speakers. So the harness is right here. We didn't do anything fancy because we didn't want to do anything to cut the wires. So this time what we're going to do is we're going to splice into a couple wires, nothing major. Uh, this is actually, if you're wondering what this is, this is the, uh, the steering wheel controller. So that way by having this, it allows you to be able to use a steering wheel control on the side of the vehicle with the aftermarket radio. So what we're going to run cable wise, we're going to run these cables through the bottom here. We're going to run RCA connections, front and rear. These will plug into the back of the radio on the front and the subwoofer side. All right, so we're gonna plug these in there. Then we're gonna have the signal cables for the speakers. These are the speaker cables. We're gonna have two sets, one left, one right. These are gonna tap into the factory speakers at this point. So we're gonna tap into the speakers. Then the speakers will no longer be run by the Pioneer radio, but it'll be run by the amplifier, which we're gonna put in the trunk. So we're gonna feed these cables up through the bottom of the dash. All right, so we've removed the radio. Uh, and then uh, what we did here is we started to run the cables. I wanted to share with you guys how the cables look. So uh, the cables, there's two sets of RCAs down here. You can see uh, we're gonna use one set for the front signals. The front signals meaning the left and right speakers on the doors. And then we're gonna use one set of uh, RCAs, which you can see I put little dots on them right here. These are marked for the subwoofer. So two channels will go to the front speakers. Two channels will go to the subwoofer. We ran dedicated speaker wires. Uh, these are going to the uh, front uh, two door speakers. And then uh, all the cables basically ran it through the inside uh, along the back of the, uh, the radio. And then it feeds around. And here you can see it more, there's a wire. So it feeds into the uh, back of the compartment, removed all the plastic just like the uh, passenger side. So that feeds directly into the trunk. And here you see the cable. The cables fed in. Uh, we ran it over here. And this will join all the other wires we have. So now you have the uh, power wire, you have the black ground wire right here. You have the remote turn on lead. You have everything all set up, uh, ready for the amplifier. So the speaker wires are gonna eventually be tucked under the carpet, but I just wanna show you the path that we're taking. So it's gonna go under the carpet along the doors, uh, the footwell. It's gonna pass through underneath here. And then we're gonna lift these little tabs up here. This, we removed the factory door sill already. Uh, so the wire is gonna tuck in here. Okay, all the way across. We're gonna make it nice and neat. It's gonna flow into the back. And then we're gonna remove these trim panels back here. We're gonna run it through into the back of the seat. All right, we're under the dash. I just wanna give you a close up look. Um, to remove this particular panel right here, it's pretty easy. There's only two real clips holding in. One clip is all the way back here where my finger is. See that right there? Just, so there's the plastic clip inside that we're gonna remove. Uh, to remove this, we need to insert a little tool in here. In the back, you see in the corner right here. So we pulled this particular clip out. This is in the back of the footwell. So once we pull that one out, then we're gonna come up to the front here. And there's one more clip, which is kind of hidden behind here. So you gotta kind of lift up here, but there's a little clip right here behind the thing. All right, so we're gonna pop that one out. Here's a better shot of that clip. This clip is actually hidden behind this little plastic. When you lift it up, it's right in there. You see a little hole? Right there. So this clip, we have to pop out. But once it's popped out, this whole piece just pretty much lifts away. You can see how it's connected. So there's one clip, two clips. So I'm gonna pull this thing out of the way. Now we get in here and kind of see the, the panels are exposed. So we're gonna run our speaker cables, which is uh, right here. We're gonna tuck this all behind the, the carpet and run it along and then I'll show you how it looks. All right, so we ran the signal cables and the RCAs up to this point right here. So the next step is to remove this uh, back trim panel and then uh, remove this pack plastic piece, which uh, there's only two Phillips screws holding it. So I removed these pieces. Uh, nothing more than an eight millimeter or Phillips screw can remove them. There's one on each side. See these were attached right here. So we took these out. This panel just pops out, so it's pretty easy. Just kind of pull on it. And the whole panel.
panel pops out. Uh, the good thing about the S2000 is, uh, you know, there's not much, there's no back seats. So uh, once the cable gets to this point right here, we just have to run it along here, up in here. And then if you, once you get up to this point right here, you basically have the trunk. This is the back side of the trunk. You can see there's a little bit of light there. So I'm gonna show you how this cable is run. Okay, and then we'll get it over to the trunk. All right, since uh, we know we're putting the amp here in the back, uh, what I did here was I just made a quick template out of a piece of foam, but you guys can make it out of anything cardboard. Um, I like to do this because it's a lot easier than trying to guess uh, what you need to cut the wood to be. But in this case, you can see the shape. Um, this hole right here is gonna be where the, the amp board is gonna be attached to the chassis. We don't wanna drill any holes in cars if we can. So always try to find um, self OEM attachment points. All right, so in this case, I'm gonna use the stock spare tire bolt to bolt the amp rack down. That's why I marked the hole over here. And this piece right here is gonna be our amp board. So it's gonna sit in here right over there like that. So if this was, once I'll get the shape correct, I'm gonna trim it over in wood, cut it out, and then we'll carpet it, and that'll be our amp board uh, bolted to the chassis. Um, I wanna make one more note here, since uh, you guys are probably wondering why this harness is uh, done this way. Um, you can run the cables individually, one at a time, but in my case, I kind of knew what we needed to run. So I, I already ran the ground wire over here. So over here, this is gonna go to the amplifier. This is gonna go plug into the amplifier. This blue wire right here, uh, you see this blue lead? Leads to this one right here. So this feeds over to the subwoofer, which we're gonna make a custom sub box for this thing later. So that's what this uh, wire goes to. So this end right here feeds the, uh, the subwoofer but it's gonna be plugged into the amp right here. So it's all neatly already ran. This wire right here is the other end of that black ground wire right here. So this one is gonna go to the chassis ground. So we're gonna ground this. I like to use a ground point that's existing. So in this case, we're just gonna use the stock ground point right here. We're gonna ground the wire there, all right? So uh, let's go get this piece of uh, styrofoam traced out. We're gonna cut this out and then we'll come back here in the trunk. All right, uh, we're looking at the amp in the trunk here, but uh, we need to mount the amp somehow. So if you remember earlier, um, I showed you guys, you know, we made a little template, right, out of uh, a piece of foam uh, piece. But essentially, I wanted to see where the amplifier was gonna sit. So we used that as a mock-up, okay? And then from that, I traced it onto a piece of wood. And uh, this little hole in the middle, this marks the spot where the spare tire bolt is. So we're gonna bolt it to the factory spot. We are not gonna drill any holes into this metal, all right? So as always, one of the rules to try to remember is never drill holes into the car. So try to use existing bolts, existing threads. So in this case, we're using the existing thread from the spare tire. Uh, so here's what it looks like. Um, you can see I, I made a piece of wood uh, using, uh, what is this, half inch uh, MDF. And then I carpeted it. So you see I carpeted the bottom, I labeled it. And then uh, this little hole marked in the middle, this is where the bolt, the factory bolt's gonna go through. So I leveled it off with a piece of wood, carpeted it using spray glue. So this is what we have. Okay, so we're gonna use this under the amp board and see how it looks. Okay, so the amp is now all mounted, ready to go. Uh, pretty much, uh, we ran all of the signal cables on the left side here. We kept it away from the power cables, which you can see they're over here. The power cables, we ran them down this side over here and away from the signal cables. Um, over here, we got the ground. We just used a factory bolt right there for the ground. Uh, remote turn on wire has been done. And then uh, of course down here, you got the, the left and right speakers. And then the blue wire is sitting right here. You see right over here, the blue wire. Uh, that one goes to the subwoofer, which we follow. We routed it this way over to this side of the trunk because we're gonna build a custom uh, subwoofer box right here for a JL10W6 subwoofer in the corner here. That way we don't use up the uh, trunk space down here. Ideally, you don't want to put a sub in here. The reason being, um, if you ever get a flat tire, your spare tire is supposed to go in here. So we don't like subwoofers in here. So we're going to build the subwoofer custom angled over here for a 10W6. So that's the next step. All right, so the trunk is pretty much done. Let's go up to the front and let's get the doors done. Okay, we're looking at the S2000 door here. Uh, with the S2000 door, we're gonna replace the door speakers with brand new Focal components. Components meaning a separate woofer and a tweeter, which we're gonna mount in the factory locations. So getting this door panel off, the first thing to do to take the door panel off, 
there is a hidden screw right here. So lift the door handle and carefully remove that one Phillips screwdriver. Using a Phillips screwdriver, I'm sorry. So when this is removed, to get this out, you slide it back, slide it forward and release it. Then once it's out, just carefully work it through the door handle. Hold it with one side. And then twist it like this, and it comes straight out like that. All right, so set this thing aside. Uh, there's only a couple other screws. There's two little clips in here, so you can use a flathead or uh, some little screwdriver here. We're gonna pop out the two little pieces. These review two more hidden screws. Again, don't lose the plastics. Okay, so we take those two out. And those two pieces are out. We're gonna remove the two Phillips screws inside. So we got one here. And one there. And that's pretty much all the screws holding the panel. The rest is just pop clips. So come, come in with like a little trim removal tool like this. Start at the bottom and work your way out. And you can hear the clips from pop out. All right, and just slowly work your way around the door. It's gonna be clips all around the door. All right, when all the clips are out, and then there's one last clip right here. This plastic thing, try not to lose it. So we're gonna pop our trim tool in here and carefully pop this one out. When it's all out the door, it's just gonna be hanging. At that point, there's clips that hold it into the metal here. So we're gonna carefully lift up on the door and the door panel will slide right off. Like that. Okay, when the door panel's off, carefully remove and unplug the uh, power window switch here. So we're just gonna push down on the clip, unplug it. Uh, the tweeter is also unplugged here and that's it. Once those two unplug, you can slide the door panel out of the way. Now you can see we already replaced the door speakers with these uh, particular ones, but we're gonna remove this and we're gonna put some nice Focal speakers in there for the uh, aftermarket. Then we're gonna run some Dynamat on the doors as well. So that'll give uh, the car a little better uh, sound quality, all right? All right, so uh, we pretty much uh, finished installing the stereo in the car. And uh, we're just gonna take it out for a quick drive, just to make sure everything's working. Uh, as I said earlier, we used a Pioneer radio. You know, we installed a set of Focal speakers. We did the Dynamat on the doors. We did installed a um, amplifier in the trunk, a four channel amp, a subwoofer. And then we also added the steering wheel control. So uh, with the radio in here now, you can open the door to do all the adjustments if you wanted to. That's one way to do it. If you don't want to use the radio adjustments, another option would be you can also use this, the, the, the factory rate radio control. So if you can see, when I'm hitting my volume down or volume up, the, uh, the volume corresponds to the radio. So everything works just like it was stock pretty much. Uh, all the pieces work and then all the uh, mute control buttons and a couple other things work pretty well too. So uh, let's get this thing All the, the mods that we did on this car were pretty much applicable to any year S2000. I know uh, this particular car we're doing is a 2008 S2000 CR, but the CRs and the regular ones, they're all the same basic configuration. So doing a stereo system in any of them is about the same. There's no difference to it. This particular CR, we've done a few upgrades, as you can tell. You know, we've got a different stereo wheel on here, one of our carbon fiber wheels. It's got the flat top and bottom. We got a completely stitched upholstery with all Alcantara. So the whole car is stitched. I, mean, I don't know if you can see, but the visors, uh, the headliner, everything is matched. Uh, we have the uh, custom door trim pieces and carbon fiber, the power window pieces, um, a lot of different parts. The door sills are carbon. So I'll show you some of that stuff later when we get, uh, get to where we're going. But let me get uh, on the highway here. And then we're gonna we 
finish the stereo on this uh, S2000CR. Um, if you guys have any questions, you're welcome to give us a call or message us and we'll be glad to answer any questions you guys will have. Thanks for watching this video. We always appreciate your support. If you guys like the video, please hit subscribe and like the video so that way we can produce more videos for you guys. Uh, until next time, thank you.